Hello to you, hello to you. I am ASMR Weetle and I hope I today can help make you feel calm, relaxed and good. So finally it's time for yet another book ASMR video, yay! <laughs> and uh, we're going to be looking at six various books today. Mm, and it will be mostly be different books than the ones I've used in earlier book videos. Although there are one or two, maybe three of the same, I'm not sure. But before we begin, I just want to address something. So you know what I've been talking about in our recent video about rude comments on my channel. And I'm going to be talking about that today too. Uh, so sometimes there are comments which comments my big teeth or uh, my long hair or my fingernails uh, you know because I haven't cut my fingernails yet and there's actually a reason for that because I was actually planning to use these fingernails to tap on the books in this ASMR video and as for my long hair uh, uh, I'm actually going to sort of soon do a video talking about mild autism and, and and some people with autism actually can struggle with things like just cutting the fingernails or cutting the hair. So it seemed appropriate to keep the long hair for the upcoming, vid upcoming video. And my teeth is just the way they are. Mm. So yeah, and I am really a very kind person. So normally I don't delete that many comments, but going forward due to these comments, uh, even talk there's not been many of them, there's just been like one, two or three, but still uh, I am probably going to be a little stricter and just maybe maybe I'll just delete these comments because they don't really add anything constructive to like anything. I am the way I am and I'm proud of that, I don't mind. I'm not going to change who I am, no. Also, and also I know what some of these people who leave root comments on people's channels uh, leave root comments on channels of people who look very good too. It doesn't matter how someone looks because they leave root comments on their channels anyway. And they'll just find any flaw they can to make themselves feel better about themselves. I think I think it's something like that. And yeah. So one of my subscribers uh, suggest, suggested that I just leave his comments up so people could roast them, but I am a very, very too kind individual for that. I understand the thinking, but I am too kind for that. I, yeah, I, I, I'm not that kind of person, you know, so I'll probably just go with the wall, uh, delete them option because I, I, I really want to not go too far in things in what if someone wants to give me feedback or something I want them to feel comfortable with doing that and what they can do that and what I can I don't take myself super seriously I truly don't but sometimes some of the comments about the way I look or am just doesn't add anything constructive I'm not really insulted by them but they don't add anything constructive so I do believe it's for the best if I just sort of be a little stricter and just delete some of those non-constructive comments going forward. Mm. So uh, yeah, that's most likely what I'm going to be doing. But uh, I hope you will know that my channel will still be a very friendly and welcoming community. And it will be a safe space and you are all welcome to give me feedback of course about how I can improve my ASMR etc but just comments about how I look although I do not take myself very seriously uh, I just don't feel that is constructive feedback personally anyway uh, but when I've talked about that now it's time to begin the video time to begin the book ASMR session okay so I have brought six various books to the library bookshelf and Let's just begin. I hope that me just talking about books and tapping on some books can help make you feel calm, relaxed and good. Yeah. Mm. 
And also I should probably add, but the reason I will do a video on mild autism is because I have mild autism. Mm. So that's why I'm going to do a video on that later. Anyway. So this is the book on Churchill. So you can see this is the Churchill book, and this is a history book, of course. I have actually not read it, it's written by Roy Jenkins, uh, an earlier treasurer and uh, interior minister, or what it's called in Britain, uh, in the 1970s. Mm. And, I've, and also an earlier president of the European Commission, so it's written by this guy, Roy Jenkins. Uh, but uh, you all know Winston Churchill, of course, the Prime Minister of Britain from Second World War, a very famous historical figure, fig fig figure often, uh, often, uh, often credited with, uh, well, with keeping Nazi Germany at bay and credited as being one of the main heroes uh, of the Second World War. You know, his leadership proved decisive in why Britain was able to defend itself from Nazi Germany. Mm. And of course, but of course, he had a long political career in life, long before Second World War. Second World War. He was minister several times and, and actually had shifted between parties early in his career. Yeah, so this book covers his entire life from the late uh, 19th century to like the mid 20th century. Mm. So, uh, yeah, I have not read it yet, but it will prove to be an interesting read for me who is interested in Britain, Churchill, British politics, and Second World War, and of course, both the history of and modern history, the history of the late 19th century and early 20th century and early 20th century mm. so, yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry if it seems like I stumbled a little in my own words now uh, it's not actually because I've forgotten anything, it's because my throat is a little dry. Anyway. So, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. But you know what? Let's move on from Churchill to, to another book. world history to fantasy Narnia. This is the Norwegian version of the second of the first or second book of the Narnia series. I mean I think in the release order it is the first book. In chronological order of the story it is the second book. Anyway. Yeah and uh, the Norwegian books were labeled in uh, the chronological story order so because of that the number two second is on it. This is uh, The Lion, Witch and the Wardrobe, which has also been adapted uh, both into a TV series and a film, and which is rumored to be adapted again now by Netflix, actually. Uh, it was adapted as a TV series in the early 1990s, late 80s, early 90s, and of course adapted as the renowned film from 2005. 2004-2005. Mm. It's probably the most famous of all the Narnia stories and the most iconic. Mm. Yeah, so it tells the story of four siblings who during Second World War is evacuated to the countryside uh, in a manor estate and uh, where we find a wardrobe taking them to a magical uh, fantasy land called Narnia, 
but everything's not entirely good in Narnia because there is eternal winter there because Narnia has been ruled for a long time by the white witch seen on the cover there and uh, but the arrival of the four siblings uh, is long propertized and with that also comes the return of Aslan the lion who essentially is kind of the equivalent of Jesus in the Narnia story mm. And so, with the siblings and the lions return to Narnia, uh, spring and summer starts to return and the winter starts to melt. And we all get into this epic bit of bat battle with the White Witch. Mm. This book is very pleasant to tap, actually. So yeah, Ooh. kind of dusty. Okay, you know what, uh, there are some illustrations in the book too, so uh, yeah, you can see here, I think this is one of the siblings moving, possibly Edmund, moving through the forest, and let's see if we can find another illustration, and this I'm pretty sure is Edmund entering the White Witch's palace, mm. Mm. so, yeah, and this is of course, uh, yeah, this is Edmund uh, having been sort of captured by the White Witch and the Witch's Dwarf. Mm. So yeah. Let's see if we can find yet. And this is of course, uh, seems to be Aslan and the various magical creatures of Narnia. This is an interesting one. I have not read this either yet, but this is something I have sort of desired to read later sometime in my life. This is J.R.R. Tolkien's Silmarillion, uh, and it essentially tells the story of how Middle-earth came to be. And Middle-earth is of course the realm in which the stories of the Hobbit, Hobbit and Lord of the Rings take place. Mm. But this is sort of the story of how that realm uh, was formed, how everything came to be. So this is story is essentially a story about Middle Earth, uh, millennia before uh, the story of Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit. Uh, kind of thought it was nice to just show you guys this book now because these days I'm actually rewatching the Lord of the Rings movies. Mm, so yeah. I have uh, not read Silmarillion, but I understand if you want to have knowledge about the early history of Middle-earth, it is a great read. Yeah. So I cannot really talk about the content of the book or anything, but uh, if you really love Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit and the Middle-earth realm, I suspect and you are very interested in its history. And I suspect the Silmarillion is an interesting read. Mm. So they're all a little dusty actually. Uh, um. Here you can actually see a Norwegian version of the map of uh, 
I suspect it's supposed to be ancient. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. Mm. I also found something interesting in the opening. It's it's essentially it says in the opening here someone has written something uh, to. It, it essentially says to, to my father, uh, it says my father's name, and then it says Christmas Eve 1994, and then it stands greetings from Vito and from, from my mom, except I was only a baby at the time, so it has to be my mom, who when she was alive, wrote this when I was a baby, and sort of gave it to my dad as a present from herself and baby me. Wow. That's, that's sort of cool. Uh, and now to the realm of history. Here is the French Revolution. This book I have actually read a few years ago. And it was a very insensible book about how the French Revolution transpired. You know, because that, that's really one of the most chaotic types in world history, in so many ways. You know, this, this revolution got major consequences for Europe, really great consequences for Europe. You know, it led to the Revolutionary War and the Napoleonic War. It, it essentially led to one of the most major conflicts in European history. Mm. So... Yeah, so this book was really insightful, really insightful. A really insightful to read about the events which transpired from uh, the outbreak of the revolution to 1780, from to, in 1789, uh, to the sort of what's sort of considered the official conclusion of the revolution, which is Napo the, the coup of Napoleon Bonaparte in 1799. I think that was the yeah. Mm. Mm. So yeah. So I read the history about the Napoleonic area and the revolutionary area. I read I read books about Napoleon and a book about the French Revolution and also a book about Jean Baptiste Bernadotte who became the Swedish king. So I and I also read a book about uh, a mistress of one of the French kings. And, um, and, and a book about, uh, you know, oh, I don't know what his name is, English is this embarrassing, you know, but very famous French king from, uh, from the 7th century, the 17th century, mm. yeah. Mm. So this is, uh, so I read a lot about this area. And this book also, of course, covers some of the background from the, for, for the French Revolution. It was a really chaotic time with a lot of power shifts and, you know, everything truly changed during this time. The monarchy was deposed, admittedly. The monarchy was restored after Napoleon's fall, uh, like, 25 years later. But uh, there came new revolutions and eventually the monarchy was permanently abolished in France. Mm. So, it's, I think it's a fascinating and really famous period in history because, you know, uh, you know these, these monarchy and regimes, it just didn't seem likely that they could fall like that, but they did, uh, you know, and that's, it, it's really sort of a shocking and radical event, which also sort of sets the foundation for a lot of our modern society, uh, laws, constitutions, and civil rights, etc. So it's a very important time in history. Mm. So yeah, let's just do some page turning. I'm not sure I can, this book is kind of heavy, but I'll try my best. Let's just, let's just sort of, this sort of, inside the book, I just have to take that out. And I'll show you, yeah. Mm -hmm. So there you can see some pictures from the French Revolution. 
Так. Here you can see a very iconic picture from the French Revolution. Mm. Of course, very famous and iconic picture from the French Revolution. I think there's one more picture I can show you guys. Uh, have uh, uh, Maria Antoinette, uh, mm, you know, the former French queen. Mm. So yeah. So this book contains a lot of pictures of portraits from the and, pic, and paintings from the French Revolution and from and from the pictures of the French Revolution. So yeah. But let's move on to the realm of fiction. Yeah, let's move on to the realm of fiction. We're going to go with something called the Tales of Beetle the Bard. Only it's the Norwegian edition of the book. This is from the Harry Potter universe. This is from the Harry Potter universe. And it's essentially uh, the various, fa various fairy tales from the universe of Harry Potter told to Wizard and magical children all over the world in the Harry Potter universe. This also includes the very famous and renowned fairy tale of Deadly Hallows. And this is probably of the fairy tale most people who follow Harry Potter uh, are familiar with because even if you've just seen the movies, the fairy tale of the, 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 the tale of the Deadly Hallows was actually told and depicted in the movie. The mm, Harry Potter and the Deadly Hallows Part One. So yeah, but this also contains a few of the other, of other fairy tales from the Wizarding World as well. Mm. So if you're a Harry Potter fan, a true Harry Potter fan, you'll probably want this book as well. Mm. Mm. You know, yeah, I say uh, there are three to four. Uh, companion books. I think there are three, maybe. Uh, I have three of them at least. There, are, there is Quidditch Through the Ages, uh, there is Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, and then there is The Tales of Beetle the Bard. And these books sort of sort of flesh out the history of the Harry Potter universe. Mm. So, um, yeah. Here you can see sort of picture depicting symbols from the various uh, fairy tales. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. This book is kind of tricky. <laughs> Just some page turn. Just some page turn. Okay. And here at the as the fifth fairy tale, I think, is the story of the Three Brothers, which is essentially the story of the Deadly Hallows. And here you can see the Elder Wand, uh, the Invisibility Cloak, and the Resurrection Stone, which I'm sure a lot of people who have either read Harry Potter or seen the movies are quite familiar with, because they are a central part of the plot of Harry Potter and the Deadly Hallows. And they're even referenced in, in the Fantastic Beasts and Where to find them films. So, so if you're a fan of Harry Potter universe, I suspect you're quite familiar with the Deadly Hallows. The three objects which are said to make one the master of that. Mm. 
And this is of course the fairy tale of the uh, of the three brothers often associated with the three objects. Mm. Okay. Um, uh, And for our final book today, we have Lord of the Rings. I actually began reading this many years ago, but I never finished uh, because there was so much other things to focus on in my life, I think. So I have planned to read it fully again someday. This is the Norwegian edition of the Lord of the Rings book. And it contains all the three Lord of the Rings stories, Fellowship of the Rings, Two Towers, and Return of the King. Mm. This is very tough. So this is Lord of the Rings story, and it of course tells the story of uh, Frodo, a hobbit, who essentially ends up being the ring bearer. And the ring is an evil object, uh, conjured by the Dark Lord Sauron, which is, and the ring essentially corrupts, uh, the, or at least always tries to corrupt the hearts of men and every creature, really. Mm. So. Uh, a lot of people who have the ring for too long grow obsessed with it. It's a very dangerous object. So with and uh, well, and seeing as the Dark Lord Siren is now returning, uh, and his fate is tied to the One Ring, uh, Frodo and his company is entrusted to sort of take the ring to Montum, where it was forged and destroyed because. It was forged in the Files of Montum, and it can only be destroyed in the Files of Montum. The problem it was is that Montum is essentially the kingdom of Sauron, so it's a very dangerous place, guarded by, you know, these ugly beings called orcs and all the foul creatures, which follow Sauron. So yeah, that was the story, very very simplified. If you haven't read or watched Lord of the Rings before, I heavily advise you do it because it's a great and epic story. And if you like fantasy stories, it it's likely you will like it. I mean, it's not guaranteed, but it's likely. Mm. So I have admittedly never fully read the books before, but I have seen the movies. Mm. And as I said, so if you want to know, if you have never read or watched Lord of the Rings before, and you want to know more about the story, you know, just uh, buy the book or the films and, yeah, and just get into it. If that kind of fantasy story is your thing. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to put this up. Yeah, sorry. Okay. I almost forgot the page turning. have to add a bit of page turning for this book as well before we're done. Hmm, that's what it looked like it might be. 
was like a depiction in this book of something. Yeah, yeah, it was content. This, I think, is supposed to be the gate to the Dwarven Mine of Moria, which the company passes through in Fellowship of the Ring. Okay. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah. Mm. Anyway. you guys enjoy it uh, this video um, mm, and what it was cozy and relaxing to you and maybe some of you even used it to just sleep I don't know or maybe you were just listening anyway I appreciate it and also I want to add at the end of it with this video but I am very grateful for all the supportive and kind comments most of the comments I get are kind and supportive and I'm very grateful for them I appreciate them and I do not take it for granted. I really am grateful and I appreciate it. So thank you. Thank you so much.